Hello, Gary Stearman. Time for another update from Prophecy in the News on the 25th of April. This is being recorded on a Wednesday, the 25th, and I want to talk a little bit about the Muslim Brotherhood. I have an article here from the National Journal by Michael Hirsch writing that the Obama administration is taking a new view of Islamist radicalism. The president realizes that he has no choice but to cultivate the Muslim Brotherhood and other relatively moderate, so-called moderate, uh, Islamist groups emerging as lead political players out of the Arab Spring in Egypt. Now, the Arab Spring is the uh, <clears throat> title given to Arab revolutionary movements uh, collectively throughout the Middle East. Uh, Tunisia, Libya, Egypt, Syria, perhaps in Jordan very soon, and perhaps in other places. There is a radicalization taking place by the Muslim Brotherhood. Now, Mr. Hirsch writes, and I quote, the Muslim Brotherhood officially renounced violence decades ago, leading then dissident radicals such as Ayman al-Zawahiri to join al-Qaeda. In other words, the Muslim Brotherhood wasn't radical enough, so they formed al-Qaeda. Well, it's no longer the case, in other words, that every Islamist is seen as a potential accessory to terrorists. So they've tamed their image a little bit in the Muslim Brotherhood, but the question remains just how stable and how peace-loving is the Muslim Brotherhood? Uh, we have a quote here, the war on terror is over. One senior State Department official who works on Mideast issues told Mr. Hirsch, now that we have killed most of al-Qaeda, uh, now that people have come to see legitimate means of expression, people who once might have gone to al-Qaeda see an opportunity for legitimate Islamism. The new approach is made possible by the double impact of the Arab Spring, which supplies a new means of empowerment to young Arabs other than violent jihad and Obama's savagely successful military drone campaign against the worst of the violent jihadists uh, in al-Qaeda. Some of the smarter hardliners on the right uh, are coming to realize that the Arab world may find another route to democracy through Islamism. And so the National Journal here is, is talking about a phenomenon that is being discussed at high levels in the Obama government, namely that the uh, Muslim Brotherhood can be our friends. Well, I put that article aside, lift up another one from Israel Today, <clears throat> April 22nd. Following the recent disqualification of Egypt's first batch of presidential hopefuls, the Muslim Brotherhood on Sunday announced its new candidate, while Israel's foreign minister warned that Egypt is quickly becoming a bigger threat to Israel than even Iran. And who's running Egypt? The Muslim Brotherhood. This peace-loving group called the Muslim Brotherhood. So for Israel, Egypt is now becoming uh, a more dangerous threat than Iran. And why not? Because Egypt lies on their southern border. Second paragraph of this article from Israel Today reads, Last week, Egypt's Presidential Elections Commission barred on technicalities three frontrunners for presidency, including the Muslim Brotherhood's Kerat al shatir Both Jerusalem and Washington were concerned that al shatir would become Egypt's president considering his hardline politics. And by the way, when they say hardline politics, they mean outright terrorism. <clears throat> but his replacement might not be any better. The Muslim Brotherhood's new presidential candidate is Mohammed Mursi, who told a press conference, uh, conference on Saturday that if elected, his government's top priority will be strong-arming Israel into accepting Palestinian land demands. So that's what's meant by a peace-loving Muslim Brotherhood uh, candidate for the Egyptian presidency. Uh, strong-arming Israel into accepting uh, Palestinian land demands. When asked if he would honor Egypt's peace treaty with Israel, Mercy vaguely responded he would abide by all the international agreements, but he would not be coerced by externally 
dictated policies. And of course, those would be the policies coming from the West, including the United States. While the Muslim Brotherhood already controls Egypt's parliament, Mursi faces a stiff challenge from former Arab League Secretary General Amr Musa. Uh, and uh, Musa, by the way, uh, is likely to be openly hostile toward Israel. So in one article we read that the Obama government is beginning to regard the Muslim Brotherhood as peace-loving, someone with whom we can work politically. Uh, meanwhile, Israel Today reports that the Israelis are very much afraid of the uh, growing uh, effect of the Muslim Brotherhood in Egypt. Well, the Muslim Brotherhood in Egypt supports, uh, they support Al-Qaeda. Let's face it, they call themselves uh, politically uh, tenable. They call themselves peace-loving. But they have always supported Fatah, Hamas, Hezbollah, and Al-Qaeda. We read about them <clears throat> in Psalm 83, verse 3. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people and have consulted against thy hidden ones. They have said, Come, let us cut them off from being a nation. Let the name of Israel, that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. And of course, uh, if you read the charters of these various groups, the PLO charter, the Hamas charter, the, all of the charters have as one of their articles cutting off Israel from, from existence as a nation. And of course that's what the Bible says. They have said, let us cut them off from being a nation, that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance, for they have consulted together with one consent, they are confederate against thee. And it'd be hard to find a, a stronger uh, description of the Muslim Brotherhood than the next two verses. Verse 6 says, The tabernacles of Edom, the Ishmaelites, Moab, the Hagarenes, Gebel, Ammon, Amalek, the Philistines with the inhabitants of Tyre, Asher is also joined with them. They have helped the children of Lot. In other words, we have here a convocation, a Latter-day convocation, that is determined to wipe out Israel. Ezekiel mentions the same group. Also, thou son of man, this is Ezekiel 36, also thou son of man, prophesy unto the mountains of Israel, and say, ye mountains of Israel, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God, because the enemy hath said against you, aha, even the ancient high places are ours in possession. Therefore, prophesy and say, Thus saith the Lord God, because they've made you desolate, swallowed you up on every side, that you might be a possession unto the residue of the heathen, and ye are taken up in the lips of the talkers, and infamy of the people. Therefore, ye mountains of Israel, hear the word of the Lord God. Thus saith the Lord God to the mountains, to the hills, to the rivers, the valleys, the desolate wastes, to the cities that are forsaken, which became a prey and a derision, to the residue of the heathen that are round about. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, Surely in the fire of my jealousy have I spoken against the residue of the heathen. In other words, this group of enemies, call them the Muslim Brotherhood, is quoted as saying, Aha, even the ancient high places are ours in possession. Of course, uh, the highest of all those places would be Mount Zion in downtown Jerusalem, Mount Moriah, the, the location of the temple of Solomon and the second temple. It's an amazing thing that we see happening in Israel right now with the development of the Islamic uh, forces around Israel, the Muslim Brotherhood, <clears throat> which is masking itself, I believe, as a peaceful force. Uh, a kind of an alternative to Hamas and Fatah and Hezbollah and Al-Qaeda. And yet, all of the experts are saying, no, nope, they're just as bad. Can't trust them either. So, we continue to watch. And hence, our slogan. <laughs> Keep looking up, everybody. Everybody.